ਬੱਚਿਓ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਪਾਠ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਹੈ ਫਿਜ਼ਿਕਸ ਬੇਸਿਕ ਸਾਇੰਸ ਹੈ ਜੋ ਯੂਨੀਵਰਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਵਾਪਰਦੀਆਂ ਕੁਦਰਤੀ ਘਟਨਾਵਾਂ ਅਤੇ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਸਮਝ ਨਾਲ ਸੰਬੰਧਿਤ ਹੈ ਫਿਜ਼ਿਕਸ ਐਕਸਪੈਰੀਮੈਂਟਸ ਅਤੇ ਮੈਜ਼ਰਮੈਂਟ ਤੇ ਬੇਸਡ ਹੈ ਮੈਜ਼ਰਮੈਂਟ ਸ਼ਬਦ ਯੂਨਾਨੀ ਭਾਸ਼ਾ ਦੇ ਸ਼ਬਦ ਮੈਟਰੋਨ ਤੋਂ ਲਿਆ ਗਿਆ ਹੈ ਜਿਸ ਤੋਂ ਭਾਵ ਹੈ ਮੈਜ਼ਰ ਜਿਸ ਨੂੰ ਕਿਸੇ ਖਾਸ ਲਿਮਿਟ ਵਿੱਚ ਮੈਜ਼ਰ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਅੱਜ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਨਡਾਇਰੈਕਟ ਮੈਥਡਸ ਨਾਲ ਵੱਡੀਆਂ ਅਤੇ ਛੋਟੀਆਂ ਦੂਰੀਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਮੈਜ਼ਰ ਕਰਨ ਦੇ ਢੰਗਾਂ ਬਾਰੇ ਪੜਾਂਗੇ ਪਰ ਇਸ ਨੂੰ ਵਿਸਤਾਰ ਪੂਰਵਕ ਪੜਨ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਇਸ ਤੇ ਪੜਨ ਦੇ ਉਦੇਸ਼ਾਂ ਬਾਰੇ ਜਾਣਕਾਰੀ ਪ੍ਰਾਪਤ ਕਰੀਏ ਲਰਨਿੰਗ ਆਬਜੈਕਟਿਵਸ ਔਨ ਕੰਪਲੀਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਥਿਸ ਟੌਪਿਕ ਲਰਨਰਸ ਵਿਲ ਬੀ ਏਬਲ ਟੂ explain the term measurement discuss the need of indirect methods to measure length explain the parallax method in detail used to measure large distances discuss the inability of various instruments to measure the size of a molecule discuss the usefulness as well as limitations of electron microscope to measure small distances explain a simpler method to estimate the molecular size apni pichli class vich assi measurement te arth padhe ki kise physical quantity da measurement us vich maujood kise chuni gayi unit di ginti de barabar hai rozana zindagi vich length di measurement zaruri hai ate ਬਹੁਤ ਸਾਰੇ ਦੇਸ਼ਾਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਲੈਂਥ ਦੀ ਇਕਾਈ ਪੁਰਾਣੇ ਤਰੀਕੇ ਅਨੁਸਾਰ ਮੈਜ਼ਰ ਕੀਤੀ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਜਿਵੇਂ 1100 ਵੀ ਏਡੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਇੰਗਲੈਂਡ ਦੇ ਰਾਜੇ ਨੇ ਹੁਕਮ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਕਿ ਉਸ ਦੇ ਦੇਸ਼ ਵਿੱਚ ਲੈਂਥ ਦੀ ਯੂਨਿਟ ਗਜ ਮੰਨੀ ਜਾਵੇ ਇੱਕ ਗਜ ਲੈਂਥ ਉਸ ਦੇ ਨੱਕ ਤੋਂ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਉਸ ਦੀ ਫੈਲਾਈ ਹੋਈ ਬਾਂਹ ਦੀ ਲੈਂਥ ਹੈ ਇਸੇ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਫਰਾਂਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਲੈਂਥ ਦੀ ਯੂਨਿਟ ਫੁੱਟ ਹੈ ਜੋ ਕਿ ਉੱਥੇ ਦੇ ਰਾਜੇ ਲੂਇਸ 14 ਦੇ ਬੂਟ ਦੀ ਲੈਂਥ ਤੇ ਬਰਾਬਰ ਸੀ ਇਹ ਯੂਨਿਟ 1793 ਤੱਕ ਚੱਲੀ ਇਸ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ 1793 ਵਿੱਚ ਵਿਗਿਆਨ ਦੀ ਅਕੈਡਮੀ ਨੇ ਲੈਂਥ ਦੀ ਯੂਨਿਟ ਦੁਬਾਰਾ ਬਣਾਉਣ ਵਾਲੀ ਯੂਨਿਟ ਬਣਾਈ ਜੋ ਕਿ ਨਾਰਥ ਪੋਲ ਅਤੇ ਇਕੁਏਟਰ ਵਿਚਕਾਰਲੀ ਦੂਰੀ ਜੋ ਕਿ ਫਰਾਂਸ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਲੰਘਦੀ ਲਾਈਨ ਹੈ ਦੇ 10 ਮਿਲੀਅਨ ਵੇ ਭਾਗ ਦੇ ਇਕੁਅਲ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਨਵੀਂ ਯੂਨਿਟ मीटर है जिस दा ग्रीक भाषा विच भाव है मेजरमेंट इस नु सारे ने स्वीकार कीता फिर 1799 विच फ्रांस विच क्रांति ऑन नाल मीटर दी नवी यूनिट बनाई गई एक मीटर प्लैटिनम इरिडियम दी रॉड दी लेंथ दे बराबर है जो के फ्रांस विच स्थित अंतरराष्ट्रीय माप तोल दे ब्यूरो विच रखी गई है फिर ਵੀ ਅਕਤੂਬਰ 1983 ਵਿੱਚ ਮੀਟਰ ਨੂੰ ਮੁੜ ਕੇ ਪਰਿਭਾਸ਼ਿਤ ਕੀਤਾ ਮੀਟਰ ਨੂੰ ਉਸ ਦੂਰੀ ਦੇ ਬਰਾਬਰ ਲਿਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਜੋ ਕਿ ਪ੍ਰਕਾਸ਼ ਦੁਆਰਾ 1/2 ਬਟਾ 2 9 9 7 9 2 4 5 8 ਸੈਕਿੰਡ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੈਅ ਕੀਤੀ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਤੋਂ ਪਤਾ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਪ੍ਰਕਾਸ਼ ਦੀ ਹਵਾ ਵਿੱਚ ਚਾਲ 2 9 9 7 9 2 4 5 मीटर प्रति सेकंड है मीटर दी पावे और भी परिभाषा दीती गई पर फिर भी मीटर 3.28 फुट ते बराबर है जो कि एक गज तो लगभग 10% ज्यादा है यू नो दैट द ऑर्डर ऑफ डिस्टेंसेस वेरीज फ्रॉम 10 टू द पावर -15 मीटर दैट इज द साइज ऑफ अ न्यूक्लियस टू 10 to the power 26 meter which is the size of the universe let's have a look at this table in which order of magnitude of the sizes of various objects has been mentioned size of a nucleus is 10 raised to the power minus 15 to 10 raised to the power minus 14 meters the size of a hydrogen atom is 10 raised to the power minus 10 meter wavelength of light is approximately 10 raised to the power minus 7 meters mean free path of an air molecule 
10 raised to the power minus 6 meters. Size of a red blood carpuscle, 10 raised to the power minus 5 meter. Tip of a sharp pin, 10 raised to the power minus 5 meter. Thickness of a sheet of paper, 10 raised to the power minus 4 meter. Height of a man, 1 meter. Height of Mount Everest, 10 raised to the power 4 meters. Radius of Earth, 10 raised to the power 7 meters. Distance of Moon from the Earth, 10 raised to the power 8 meters. Distance of Earth from the Sun, 10 raised to the power 11 meters. Size of our galaxy, that is the Milky Way galaxy, is 10 raised to the power 21 meters. And the size of the universe is approximately 10 raised to the power 26 meters. The distances ranging from 10 to the power minus 5 meter to 10 to the power 2 meter can be measured by direct methods. The direct method involves comparison of the distance or length to be measured with the chosen standard of length. Tusi pehla vi length ti measurement te kuch direct and indirect methods bare jante ho. Jime udaran de taur te. Measuring of the diameter of the sphere is an example of direct method whereas examples of indirect methods are the measuring of thickness of a coin. Here first we measure the thickness of some coins then take the mean value to measure the thickness of the coin. Similarly, we measure the thickness of the wire or thickness of a paper. A meter scale or a tape is used for lengths from 10 to power minus 3 meter to 10 to power 2 meter. Whereas a vernier caliper can be used for measurements of lengths up to 10 to power minus 4 meter and a screw gauge can be used to measure lengths as less as up to 10 to power minus 5 meter. Is range to upar di length jime ki atomic ya universe te distances asi indirect methods naal measure karte haan. Apni pichli class vich to si height ate distance त्रिकोण मिति अनुपात नाल मापे तुसी किसे पहाड़ दी हाइट किवे माप सकते हो जहां मून दा अर्थ दे किसे बिंदु तक डिस्टेंस किवे मेजर कर सकते हो अजेहियां दूरियां दी मेजरमेंट ले असि इको मेथड जहां परावर्तन विधि दी वर्तों कर दे हां डू यू नो दैट सम एनिमल्स हैव यूज्ड साउंड फॉर कम्युनिकेशन एंड ऑब्जेक्ट डिटेक्शन फॉर मिलियंस ऑफ इयर्स Bats use echolocation for environment recognition. That is, they use reflected sound waves to measure the distance, the velocity and the scale of insects or trees. Eco method may be used to find the distance of a hill from an observer. To do so, a gun is to be fired towards the hill and the time interval between the instant of firing the gun and the instant of hearing the echo of the gunshot is to be recorded. It should be clear that in this time interval, sound has travelled from the observer to the hill and then back to the observer. If V be the velocity of sound, S the distance of hill from the observer and T the total time taken, then the total distance travelled is equal to twice of S which is equal to the product of V and T or we can measure S equal to VT upon 2. In a similar manner, we can use sound to measure the height of a room, depth of a wall but we cannot use sound to measure the distance of moon from earth. By making the use of a laser beam in place of sound waves. The eco method is used to measure the distance of the moon from the earth. We use laser 
to measure the distance of such type of astronomical bodies because laser is a source of very intense monochromatic and unidirectional beam. If T be the time taken by the laser beam in going to and returning from the moon, the distance of the moon from the earth is given by S equal to CT upon 2 where C is the velocity of laser beam which is equal to the speed of light in vacuum. The eco method has a wide range of applications. It is used to find the thickness of a sheet of matter. It also serves as the basic principle of radar and sonar. Let us see the use of eco method in radar and sonar. Radar is a system to identify the range, height and speed of moving as well as fixed objects as aeroplane or ships. Radar uses electromagnetic waves, especially microwaves or radio waves, not the sound waves. Radar was originally called as Radio Direction Finder or RDF, but from 1941 it is well known as radar as an acronym for radio detection and ranging. It has a transmitter that emits the electromagnetic waves which are reflected by the target and detected by a receiver. To measure the distance of an object, radio waves are sent into space from a transmitter and measured the time it takes for the reflection to return. The distance is one half the product of the round trip time and the speed of the signal. We chose half of the round trip time because the signal has to travel to the target and then back to the receiver. Radio waves travel at the speed of light in vacuum that is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second. Accurate distance measurement requires sophisticated radar which can tell the distance as well as the speed and elevation of an aeroplane. Radar is used for controlling of air traffic as well as for meteorological detections. Let us continue with sonar. Do you know that some marine mammals such as toothed whales, white whales, sperm whales, dolphins, purposes, etc. use sounds to obtain information about their surroundings and to find food. They do this by producing sounds that are reflected back when they strike an object. It helps them to navigate and feed in dark at night and in deep water where it is not easy to see. For example, toothed whales send high frequency sounds into the environment. The sounds then bounce off distant objects and the echoes are received by the toothed whales. The toothed whales that produce the original echolocation can determine how far away an object is based on the time an echo takes to return. Similar to toothed whales, the use of sound to echolocate underwater has been prompted after the famous Titanic disaster of 1912. However, the use of sound by humans in the water is initially recorded by Leonardo da Vinci in 1490. In the 19th century, an underwater bell was used as an ancillary to lighthouses for warning of hazards. The world's first underwater eco-ranging device was developed by English meteorologist Richardson one month after the sinking of the Titanic. During First World War, the need to detect submarines promoted the use of sound to detect the distances. Sonar, which started as an acronym for sound navigation and ranging, is the generic name of the technology that is used to locate objects underwater. Sonar uses ultrasonic waves to detect and locate rocks, submarines, etc. submerged underwater with the help of a transducer. 
when an ultrasonic signal is sent into the water, part of it will be reflected back if it strikes an object or a target. The distance to the object can be calculated by measuring the time between when the signal is sent out and when the reflected sound or echo is received. If t be the time taken by the ultrasonic signal in going to and returning from the object and v be the speed of the signal, then the distance of the object is given by s which is equal to vt upon 2. For example, if it takes 6 seconds between the emission of the outgoing sound and the return of its echo, the sound has taken 3 seconds to travel to the object and 3 seconds to return. If the average speed of sound in the water is 1500 meters per second, so if it takes 3 seconds for the sound to reach the object, we can assume the object is 3 into 1500 or 4500 meters away. Sonar systems generally use highly directional beams of sound when searching for targets. In this way, they are able to determine direction to the target as well as the distance. The echo received by a sonar system also tells us whether the echo is produced by a submarine or a rock outcrop or a cluster of fish or a whale. It also helps in mechanical testing of the material without damaging it. How do astronomers know how far away a star or a galaxy is? Large distances such as the distance of a planet or a star from the earth cannot be measured directly. However, inside the solar system, astronomers can simply bounce a radar signal towards a planet, asteroid or a comet to measure the distance of that object. But some stars are hundreds, thousands or even tens of thousands of light years away. Let me remind you that a light year is how far light travels in a single year. If a star is 100 light years away, then to bounce a radar signal of such a star would require you to wait for 200 years to get a signal back. Obviously, we can say that radar is not a feasible method for determining how far away the stars are. In fact, there is one and only one direct method to measure the distance to a star that is the parallax method. Do you know what is parallax? When you hold a pencil in front of you against some specific point on the wall and look at the pencil first through your left eye by closing the right eye and then look at the pencil through your right eye by closing the left eye, you would notice that the position of the pencil seems to change with respect to the point on the wall. This is called parallax. Parallax is an apparent displacement or difference of orientation of an object viewed along two different lines of sight and is measured by the angle or semi-angle of inclination between those two lines. By observing the size of this angle and knowing how far the observer has moved, one can determine the distance to the object. The term is derived from the Greek parallaxis which means alteration. The distance between the two points of observation is called the basis. To measure distance of an object by parallax method, let us consider an object O at a distance D from our two eyes. Suppose that the lines joining the object to the left eye that is point L and the right eye that is point R subtend an angle alpha. The angle alpha is called the parallax angle or parallactic angle and the distance LR which is equal to small b is called basis. 
taking the distance LR as a circular arc of radius D and using the relation that is angle equal to arc upon radius. We get alpha equal to B upon D or D is equal to B upon alpha. So, if you can measure the angle alpha, you can also measure the distance of the object. However, in case of an astronomical object, the angle alpha will be extremely small because the distance of an astronomical object is extremely large and the basis is very small. Therefore, the parallax angle is too small to be measured. To measure the distance D of a faraway star or planet O by the parallax method, we observe it from two different positions or observatories L and R on the earth at the same time. Therefore, the basis B becomes equal to the separation between two positions L and R, whereas the angle between the two directions along which the object is viewed at these two points is alpha. Again, taking the distance LR as a circular arc of the radius D, we get alpha equal to B upon D or D is equal to B upon alpha. It may be pointed out that parallax angle can be measured only if we observe the object O simultaneously from points L and R on the earth. However, for stars it is not possible. For this we select a very distant star which appears vertically overhead at different points on the surface of the earth. Let at point L the angle between the direction of the distant star and the astronomical object O is phi 1. Similarly, at point R, the angle between the direction of the distant star and the astronomical object O is phi 2. Then, parallax angle alpha is equal to the sum of phi 1 and phi 2. We can also measure the size of an astronomical object such as sun and moon. For this, we have to focus a telescope on the surface of the object and observe its disk image. Let alpha be the angle subtended by the two ends A and B of the diameter of that object at point O on the surface of the earth. Reciprocally, it is the angle of parallax from that object's perspective. Let D be the distance of the object from the surface of the earth and small d be the diameter of the object. For a better approximation, the diameter AB of the astronomical object can be considered as a circular arc of radius D. Then angle alpha is equal to small d upon D or in other words, small d is equal to the product of distance d and angle alpha. To measure a very small size like that of an atom or a molecule, we have to adopt special method. We cannot use a screw gauge. Even a microscope has certain limitations. An optical microscope uses visible light to look at the system under investigation. For visible light, the range of wavelengths is from about 4000 angstroms to 7000 angstroms. Hence, an optical microscope cannot resolve particles with sizes smaller than this. Instead of visible light, we can use an electron beam. Electron beams can be focused by properly designed electric and magnetic fields. The wavelength of an electron can be as small as a fraction of an angstrom. Electron microscopes have much greater resolving power than optical microscope and can obtain much higher magnifications. They can almost resolve atoms 
and molecules in a material. However, we can measure the size of atomic order with the help of electron microscope along with Avogadro's hypothesis. We know that the atoms are spherical in shape. When a large number of atoms are put together, the empty spaces are left between them. According to Avogadro's hypothesis, the actual volume occupied by the atoms in one gram of a substance is two-third of the volume occupied by one gram of the substance. If we have a sample of a substance of mass M and volume V, if capital M be its molecular weight and N is the Avogadro number, then the number of atoms in a given sample are equal to the product of Avogadro number and mass of the substance divided by its molecular weight. If R be the radius of each atom, then actual volume of atoms in the given sample is equal to the number of atoms multiplied by the volume of an atom. According to Avogadro's hypothesis, the actual volume occupied by the atoms in a sample of substance is two-third of the volume occupied by the sample of the substance, which gives the radius of an atom as equal to the cube root of the product of molecular weight and volume of the sample divided by twice pi times mass of the sample, which is further divided by the Avogadro number. Let us discuss a simple method for estimating the molecular size of oleic acid. Oleic acid is a soapy liquid with large molecular size of the order of 10 to the power minus 9 meter. First, we form monomolecular layer of oleic acid on the water surface. For this, we dissolve 1 cubic centimeter of oleic acid in alcohol to make a solution of 20 cubic centimeter. Then we take 1 cubic centimeter of this solution and dilute it to 20 cubic centimeter using alcohol again. So the concentration of the solution is equal to 1 by 400. Next we lightly sprinkle some lycopodium powder on the surface of water in a large trough and we put one drop of this solution in the water. The oleic acid drop spreads into a thin, large and roughly circular film of molecular thickness on water surface. Then we quickly measure the diameter of the thin film to get this area A. Suppose we have dropped n drops in the water. Initially, we determine the approximate volume of each drop, that is V centimeter cube. Volume of N drops of solution is equal to N into V cubic centimeter. The amount of oleic acid in this solution becomes equal to NV divided by 400 cubic centimeter. This solution of oleic acid spreads very fast on the surface of water and forms a very thin layer of thickness small t. If this spreads to form a film of area A square centimeter, then the thickness of the film T is equal to the volume of the film divided by the area of the film, which is equal to NV divided by 400 times the area of the film. If we assume that the film has monomolecular thickness, then this becomes the size or diameter of a molecule of oleic acid. The value of this thickness comes out to be of the order of 10 to the power minus 9 meter. Before concluding of today's topic, let us have a look on certain special units for length. These are Fermi which is equal to 10 raised to the power minus 15 meter 
angstrom which is equal to 10 raised to the power minus 10 meter astronomical unit which is equal to 1.496 times 10 raised to the power 11 meter one light year which is equal to 9.46 times 10 raised to the power 15 meter and a parsec which is equal to 3.08 times 10 to the power 16 meter let us now summarize today's topic we can measure the length by direct method for the range from 10 to the power minus 5 meter to 10 to the power 2 meter to measure lengths beyond these ranges we make use of some special indirect methods some animals have used sound for object detection they use reflected sound waves to measure the distance the velocity and the scale of insects or trees this method is known as the eco method the eco method also serves as the basic principle of radar and sonar large distances such as the distance of a planet or a star from the earth cannot be measured directly however inside the solar system distance of a planet an asteroid or a comet can be measured by bouncing a radar signal towards that object but some stars those are hundreds thousands or even tens of thousands of light years away cannot be measured by this method for such type of measurement there is one and only one method to measure the distance to a star that is parallax method to measure a very small size like that of an atom or a molecule we use electron microscopes and measure the size using Avogadro's hypothesis so now we come to the end of today's topic let us have a quick test my first question is define direct method of measurement the direct method involves comparison of the distance or length to be measured with the chosen standard of length the next question is reflected sound waves to measure the distance is known as well you know the answer its eco method next question what is the full form of sonar it is sound navigation and ranging the next question is what is the basic principle of radar and sonar the answer is radar and sonar are based on eco method the next question is define parallax method the answer to this parallax is an apparent displacement or difference of orientation of an object viewed along two different lines of sight and is measured by the angle or semi angle of inclination between those two lines i hope you enjoyed the lesson and must be looking forward to the next class thank you for your attention and see you next time again